At Chadwick Model Railway, things have moved on. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. In this video, there's a bit more track laying and uh, a couple more points, but the main thing is the boards are back in. Um, Refitting them was interesting, and there's a little bit of a kind of Lauren Hardy sequence at the end of the video as me and a friend of mine, Ian, fit, fitted those two boards back. Um, they went in okay, but you know, we are where we are. It's never easy, these great big boards are shifting them around. But the main thing is the boards are back in and now I can focus on completing this, the rest of this side of the layout. So, over to the video. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I notice that actually only about 25% of my viewers do. And also, if you click the little bell icon, then you'll get a notification when the next video is released. And just want to remember, what I'd like you to do, if you would, is to just leave a comment below um, stating which gauge you model, if that makes sense. So whether you're an HO, a double O, an N or an O or whatever, um, just put a simple comment, you know, Billy, O gauge or whatever it might be. Um, I won't reply to all the comments if you don't mind, that'll be the fun I'm going to carry on. But at the end of the day, um, I can then ta tailor my videos to suit, to suit the majority kind of thing. Thanks. A quick recap then. I'd ripped up all the track because uh, I wanted to put the foam underlay in. There's the main up and the main down which come from the viaduct and they stream off down uh, towards the station. Um, it's all code 100 except for from here on these areas here become code 75. I fancied using a electrofrog double slip and this parcels head shunt here is also code 75. The rest of it's code 100. Um, all in good to go. There's a insul frog code 100 double slip in here um, which takes it up to the branch line. I've used the Woodland Scenics 3% um, inclined to come up here and that will come across the rest of the letters you'll see later on. So where do we go from here? Well I need to put another piece of track in here and a catch point into here. Um, so um, in reality if you had a runaway it's not going to end up across in the main line so your train would naturally de derail here. So that's what my, um, I intend to do next. And the little catch point is a, a left hand catch point, quite straightforward little thing. Pop it in there. I am still um, and the dilemma of whether to fit a, uh, a, to a tortoise point motor underneath here or whether just to leave this in the clear position. <sighs> this, I hate the word prototypical, but it's niggling me now and I keep thinking, um, should I go all the way and put a, put a point motor underneath here? Um, I have checked, yeah, we are good. Um, anyway, I shall re-solder a pair of droppers to go through here to connect this one up and in that time I'll have sort out the dilemma of whether to um, put a point motor under here. If you haven't come across catch points before, then looking at this photo, perhaps you can see that if a, a, a train was to come um, up from the bottom of this photograph, uh, it would naturally derail, and that is because um, its access onto the main line there is denied, probably because there's another train coming through or whatever. Um, and these are a safety feature that you find you know, throughout the world on, on you know, almost every railway. I'm, I've, well, I've never come across one without, that doesn't use catch points, there's bound to be one somewhere. Um, but it's a good little feature and one that's worth modelling. And of course a train coming down this incline would be even more vulnerable um, with the force of gravity help, you know, helping it to sort of push it down the tracks. So with a brake failure it's kind of bound to end up on the, on the main line. I'm going to move the catch point down a little bit, down to about there, so I need to trim this track. So I'll mark it, I'm going to take it off the other end because there's always some, there's all the webbing's already cut, so I need to cut through this bit of track. Just put my goggles on. As you're aware, I've used train controller and block detection, but this small piece of track won't show up. I'm not going to put a, a feed um, into uh, 
into the system. This is just a um, kind of an inert piece of track, if you like. So that won't uh, necessarily show up. That's good to go. Just need to re-solder these pieces. And if you've seen my previous videos, um, you'll know that the way I do this is um, I always wire black to the back so I know uh, kind of my polarities of what's going on. And uh, if you're ever going to buy a pair of wire strippers, these are the ones to buy. They're from a company called Radio Shack and they're 382-2847. I can't seem to find a link on Amazon to sort of to give you a lead, but um, they are absolutely brilliant. If you're going to buy one pair of wire strippers in your life, then clearly these are going to be the ones. I just need to desolder these old droppers. And I mentioned about black to the back. So the, if this is the front, because that's where the well is going to be, then this rail must be the back rail. So that's always black and the front one's always red. So as this one's going to go into there, so the, this is going to be the black rail, that one there. So where's my black cable? And my solder, I always use 6040 solder. Um, it kind of does what it says on the tin, really. It really is a good, decent solder. <clears throat> Clean the old solder iron. Ba and if you ever watch my other videos, you'll know that I always put the cables to the inside of the rails because that way I only need the one hole in the baseboard to take both cables down and then hopefully you can see these are on good and that's the way they kind of come down. So I need a hole there for those cables. And I've, I've already checked underneath and yes, I do have the, uh, the clearance. So I need a cable underneath there. And then we'll then come on to this catch point. With my trusty mate Makita, I drill a, the hole there. For the cables. Do, mm -hmm. And the cable size, as I'm sure you're aware, for all these droppers is something called 702, which is seven strands of 0.02 millimeter cable. All the rest of my cables, the main cables, are, f are five amp, uh, rated five amp cables, and I buy the stuff from Halfords, and that's what my main bus wires are made from. So we pop that one in there, make sure that fits okay, pull the cables tight, and we're good. And then I shall mark up where the catch point is gonna go, make sure we're still in the middle. Yes, we are. We've got a good join here. I've got an insulated rail joiner here, just because um, um, if this is a, uh, to do with um, sort of block detection and things like that. So there's an inch rail joiner there. So these power sex, uh, power districts are kept separate. Um, in goes that point there. And if I want to put a, a point motor in, it'd help if I turn the thing the right way around, I suppose. Is that right? I'll think about that. Straight on. Nope, it is that way around. Come on, Charlie, make yourself look foolish. Derails down there. Yep, that's the right way around. And I get a small pin and I pop the blades into the centre and with the blades in the centre, or blade because it's a catch point, but with the, with the uh, switch plate in the centre, I then pop in a very, very small, thin tack. And then I take it out, I take out the switch, uh, the point, I was hopefully it was trying to get it to come through. But anyway, I can see where the hole is there. And that's the center of where I'm going to draw my uh, point motor um, switch arm. Still make sure I'm clear underneath. Yes, I am. And switch the drill to a 10 mil 
spade and send that one through that pilot hole. And there we go. So we're all good, uh, we know what's happening now. If I decide to put a point motor in, then this, the, the top side of the board is, uh, is okay and the hole is in the right place, if that makes any sense. Because to try to fit a point motor to a point um, that you haven't drilled the hole, for, it's an absolute nightmare. You can't drill through the other side without smashing the point up. So if ever you think about um, putting a point motor in, Sorry, put, if you, that you fit a point and you're not going to put a point motor in, but you might do it subsequently. Drill the hole um, as you fit the point motor because then at least you've got the hole there if you change your mind. I mean, it's just a you know, hole in a piece of wood, no big deal, it didn't cost you anything. So I shall now glue these two in position using, there it is, foam tack glue from uh, Woodland Scenics. It's ST1. 444 that's ST1444 um, and that is uh, and the only reason I'm using that stuff there is obviously it's formulated for this foam and it should minimize the sound trans uh, transmission um, from the trains into the boards which is the whole thing that uh, I'm obsessing about. So let's just glue these in And of course, the main thing to worry about when you're doing this bit is keeping the glue away from the switch blades. So to leave this area here completely clear of glue. Tension is incredible, isn't it? Still, it's still not in. I still managed to miss that insulated rail joiner. There we go. Okay. Next, I need another couple of metal rail joiners for the catch point. Okay, two nice shiny, shiny, two nice shiny rail joiners going on there. Make sure it's in the middle. One thing you can do with rail joiners is you can kind of get one side doesn't quite go in, so it's always worth checking that you've got all four, you know, in you know, both sides of them all, and then this should take the the rise out of this. There's no bump coming up this incline is my other worry. So that's in and looking good. That's smack in the middle where I drilled that hole. So now all we need to do is hold them still. So just a little weight on both of these and in not too long they'll be in and dry. Well they'll be held in place anyway. That's gone quite tacky now, so we're uh, we're good to shift this board and turn it back over the other way and have a look at the wiring for that section of track. Not necessarily the easiest job to do, but it is far easier than uh, if, of course, you were. Uh, Doing it upside down on your on your baseboards. Of course, it makes it so much easier to film it as well because obviously you can see this. 
hopefully a lot easier than if it was against the wall. Just got to protect the the um, the incline polystyrene that's uh, in this area here, and here is where the new point uh, uh, shows through. So, am I going to point the fit the new point motor? motor? Well, of course I am. I can't let it go, I can't not try it. So here's the hole that we just drilled coming through there. So I just need to move this cable back a little bit out of the way, get a little bit of cork, glue that in place for, um, to as a, act as a cushion for the new point motor going on there. And then the cables from the new point motor will then run across over to here where you can see um, there's a couple of DS64s, uh, these units here. Um, which switch all my points. And as you can see, the feeds going into the DS64s are all yellow and green. Um, sorry, <laughs> yellow and blue. They're all yellow and blue. Um, so uh, I have a kind of a wiring um, standard, if you like, and all my fogs are green and the power switches are all red and black and that kind of stuff. Anyway, all straightforward. So I now just crack on and fit that point motor and then we should be ready to reinstall this board back into the layout. If you're not used to working with uh, with slow action or tortoise point motors, I'll just do a quick run through and do this in real time. So I need to shift that out of the way because it's uh, in the way. So just pull those cables back out of the way. That's where the motor's going to go. And you buy from tortoise one of these small um, little templates. So you pop the template where the hole is and you have to take into consideration that the point might be at an angle. So you can't just put it there because I actually know that this point is in that configuration and I can see it straight through the hole. So I need to get this smack bang where the hole is, which is there. And then simply mark up with my youngest daughter's Barbie pencil to which one viewer mentioned that I had lost all respect for using such a dreadful thing. Braddle, make a few holes. That should accommodate the screws, hopefully. I think this is going to have to go on the other side, so we'll just pop that out of the way over there. Um, I will put a little bit of a pad underneath these things, just in case there's any noise to come down from the tortoise. So a bit of uh, impact adhesive, or if I'm using my hot glue gun, I would rather use that, but I'm not going to flash that up just for the one item. So pop that into place. Lovely, put tortoise point motor, pop that in. Now I make a modification to these because I use a one mil wire rather than a two mil wire, which goes down through into the hole, through into the switch plate. I use a, a one mil, um, I drill that out to 1.2 mil. I just want a meter of wire. And hopefully you can see this. This is the template you get from tortoise. And hopefully you can see here, there is a kind of a guide to the profile you need to bend your wire. It's quite simple. And if your hole's a little bit out, of course, you can always bend the wire a bit differently because um, you know it is a rather forgiving item really. So we need to pop that into place there, screw that down. It shouldn't take too long. Never know which screws to use, really. I always kind of root through, root through my old screw, screw box looking for something suitable. Trouble is, I'm my own worst enemy, as I'm sure you are, that um, when you find the right screws, you don't go out and buy a box of them, do you? You just think, oh, that's a good idea, we'll use those. And then when the box is empty, you're back into the same dilemma again. Still, we never learn, do we? That's three, fourth one in there. These aren't forgiving the position because you, there's not really any um, manoeuvrability. You know, you, it, it kind of goes where it's put. 
it's not as if it's on a, a sliding hole or anything like that. And all I do is pinch these up until it's until it's tight. Bit wonky that last one, still no one will die. Then is these two pieces here. This bit slides into the into the jobby like that. So what I tend to do is because it's always difficult to thread this through the switch blade, is I put that in first, then I thread it through the switch blade. That's easier said than done when you can't see, isn't it? Is that through? Yep. Then into the hole, then thread that down then pop under the board and then operate the point motor to see if it switches your point properly. Yes, it does. But I can afford to push this down slightly so it moves the uh, point even slower because of the way the action works. And there's not as much pressure then left on the point blades. Beautiful. Okay. So now all you need to do is get some cables onto here and my. My wiring is always green and blue for points. Missed. Pop a solder there. Move the camera slightly. And the first thing, of course, is to tin these. It's a used point. I've uh, recovered it from another layout. I thought I did that one. So there is solder on the point itself. And the easiest way I find to do these, I shouldn't say that, should I? is if you can is to thread these through the hole then bend them down and then pop a bit of solder on the front Hopefully you can see that without my big head getting in the way. Yeah. On to the blue one. It doesn't matter which way these two these go around. Um, a bit more trouble threading that one through. There we go. Bend him down. Hold him in place. Pop a drop of solder. Hold it still. Take it away, give it a tug. And I can move that one back a bit. It does the you can see the cables a little bit. And then the thing that most people do forget is to just clean um, the solder off. And for that, what I use is a drop of isopropyl alcohol and the tissue and just give it a wipe. Now I'm as guilty as everyone else with this. I tend to forget this sort of uh, 
nine out of ten times. But by leaving it lying around in the railway room, I can, uh, it kind of triggers the, uh, the mind, as it were. So that's all that done. All I've got to do now is to run these two cables back to the, um, the DS64 uh, uh, point controllers, and we're kind of good to go. And then reposition this. Obviously, put this cable in and route it through properly. Um, anything else to go on here? Not really, no, because there's no frog to switch, because there is, this isn't uh, a full-blown point. And the detection elements of the... Um, these cables here, which I'm going to use for a mimic board, um, this isn't going to do that either, so it's literally just a straight point. Well, not quite done, of course. I forgot to put the screw in the hole, haven't I? I shouldn't be allowed out without a carer, really. And then when we flip the board over, I've got the excess of this to trim off, which I'll show you shortly. So that's the cables cut to length, ready to route through. There is, of course, one other thing to do, and that's just to test the point, because there's no point in connecting it up to find the thing doesn't work. So just watching this, uh, the armature there, and using a 9-volt sort of burger, uh, burger, uh, um, smoke alarm battery. There it goes, and if I just turn the wires around the other way... And back it goes. There we are. Um, and if I've wired it up incorrectly so that um, it needs to be in the closed position or the thrown position and these wires are the wrong way around, then I obviously don't desolder these and switch them. I just change them around on the Digitrax DX64 point controller um, because it's a simple way of just, uh, like I say, just swapping them over. So I'll thread these through and we'll be done. There is, of course, one little task to do before I turn it over, and that's these two cables here, um, which came off that um, piece of track that came straight off the um, double slip going up the incline. So these two here need to be trimmed. And as that's part of the outer circuit, hopefully you can see here that this is the outer circuit um, tag strip. So naturally, um, the black will go the black side and the red on the red side. Um, and I keep a paper copy of which um, feeds, uh, you know, go to, go to where or whatever. Um, so I've got a paper copy, um, should I ever get a wiring problem. It's when you work around at someone else's wiring, it always, you know, appears to be far more complicated than it really is. But it's only because you, you know, you haven't wired it up yourself. If you've done it yourself, you'd know, you know, as you go through the wiring stages, exactly which, um, which cable is which. It's, um, quite, uh, Intimidating, I suppose, when you look at some wiring and you think, you know, how on earth is he, uh, does he know what's what? But if you've done it yourself from the start, then it, it is really quite straightforward. And hopefully my head isn't in the way here. Oops. That one. That one's a little more tricky. There we are. Easy, easy stuff. Right this board back over again. Here's the uh, armature wire, needs to be trimmed down um, and unless you're used to using one of these uh, these disc cutters then you know be very very careful these really don't take prisoners. Um, what you don't want to do is put any heat into the plastic switch blade because you'll just melt it so with this all I'm going to do is go in there quite quickly and just trim it straight off and this is kind of in and out. I have as I've mentioned in, in videos before, I have ruined points um, using the, the, the kind of um, the brown fiber um, type cutting discs. But this one here, this kind of, I don't think they call it a steel diamond disc, this one really does the job and I'm at speed 20 so it's not going to hang around.
And there we go, quite simple really. It's easy as that. I've done just about all I can to this board now, so it's time to refit it. And then when my good friend Ian arrives, we will uh, plonk it back in. And obviously this one goes in here. And then once that one is in, we'll pick up the viaduct and refit that one. So I can bring those tracks in and get it running right around. And then once that's in, I can then change my focus up onto what I used to call board two and then reprofile those tracks. But I'll show you that in just a second. Right, so if I take this end, and you take the other end. You okay? I'm fine. And I'll probably cut the uh, <laughs> kicks the camera. Right, you're, I've left the drill obviously in a position where you can trip I over can, it. I can trip over it nicely, yes. Um, they just, just lay it down. Okay, stay there. Come a bit closer, stay there. Right, I think I have to, can you just, I'm, I'm gonna have to get underneath this, I think. Okay. Ouch, my head. Be in then. Okay? Yes. So if I take this out and put that to there. When I say okay, I don't really mean okay. Okay. Okay, and stay there, stop there. Go back a bit further and stop there. Right, I've got this end. It's okay, okay. Yep. Just I might have to get on my hands and knees again, you see. And grovel profusely. <laughs> right. Uh, so it's all about the back scene, okay? Yeah. It should go on about there. Okay? Do you snug I'll, against the wall? I'll just take it from Yes. If you stay there. It's like a great video. Drop my glasses. Right. So it needs to come That'll be the phone then. <laughs> you hear that in the video? So. You couldn't, you could not make it up, could you? Yeah. And now with the hillside refitted, it all looks so much nicer. And so looking to what I always called board two, which is the one with the cork on, you can see uh, the change where I've ripped up all the track and we're ready to go on this one. And what I intend to do here is to have those four tracks running across this cork area um, and then joining up with these four but on a slight curve. And of course you wouldn't have a, a curve for no reason, you can't have a curved 
just because it looks good on my layout sort of thing. So with the branch line going up here, what I'm going to do is build a small hill and then obviously the curved tracks would be going around that small curve, which kind of makes sense. I think that's probably a better idea. Um, but of course, sadly, I have these two lovely great big long platforms which are capable of taking an eight coach train um, and they're kind of no longer fit for what I wanted because now I need um, great big long curved platforms uh, and if you have any ideas how I'm going to do that then please leave it in the comments below because that's my my next challenge which you'll see in a layout update in round about four weeks time. In two weeks time, I intend to push out the next video and that will be on uh, rewheeling and um, putting new couplings in. So that should be um, something a little bit more different, a little bit of a different how to on that front. Um, my sincere thanks to Ian for giving me a lift in with those boards because without his help, um, my wife and I would have struggled profusely. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks to Ian for that. Um, and that wraps this up. But I'd like to say thanks as usual to my patrons. And if you haven't subscribed, then it's about time you did. And there should be a video here and here if you have time. I'll see you at the next one. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.